Uh, coming up, we have some fantastic cars for you to check out. We are at the San Diego Auto Show. We got concept cars. We've got a million dollar aftermarket Mercedes you have got to see. And we've got a Chevrolet called a Volt. And it will give you quite a jolt. It's wealth on wheels. In addition to some very groovy cars like the Barbie Mobile, the car show also has some motorcycles, not just any motorcycles. These are made by Boss Haas. And one of the unique features of these motorcycles is the fact that you can have it designed with any rear end you like. For example, you can have a Corvette, a 57 Chevy. They even have the world's fastest bar stool. Here at the Auto Show, they have lots of features to promote human comfort and human safety, but I'm especially happy to see that they're also taking care of man's best friend. It's well trained. Bark and Buckle Up is a company dedicated to protecting your pets while on the road or in the air. Well, Christina, it's really important for people to buckle up. But what makes me absolutely nuts is when I see people driving around, uh, especially in pickup trucks, with their dogs in the back, unsecured. Absolutely. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Actually, um, we're working with several fantastic products. One is Pet Buckle. In fact, at this show, we're giving away 100 free Pet Buckles. For small dogs, airport-approved kennels like this is the perfect way to transport your pet in a car or in a plane. And I gotta tell you, on behalf of man's best friend, we really thank you for what you're doing and keeping us safe. Thank you very much. And we will be right back with more from the San Diego Auto Show. Don't you dare go away. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. At the convention center, Toyota gave visitors an opportunity to do some four-wheeling on their specially designed off-road course. If I saw a hill like this in San Francisco, I would park the car, leave, catch a cab. Okay, <laughs> but we're going to go up this hill, right? Go up You're going to go take us there. there. Oh, way up there. Do I need to give you an e-ticket for this ride? Uh, can you imagine? Oh, that? People stand in line to come do this. Uh, you know, left turn, left turn, left turn, left turn. There you go between the cones. Uh, I need a moment. Okay. <laughs> I normally travel with a guy named Murphy, and Murphy would come in right about now, <laughs> I'm thinking. If anything could go wrong. You got it. He's my constant traveling companion. Uh, well, here we are, safe and sound, we back at, uh, We're back alive. at home base. We're alive. We're alive. Start right, right behind you at the now, now, don't push your luck and ask me to parallel park this thing, okay? <laughs> That's how you handle a four-wheeler in rough terrain, right? Next stop, Baja. All right. Is the electric car the solution for the wave of the future? Well, Wealth TV's president thinks that it's worth a shot, so he purchased this beautiful Porsche 911, and we are in the process of turning it into an all-electric ride. And as we transform the Porsche, our camera is going to be rolling during each step of the process. And when we complete the project, we're going to show you exactly how it all comes together. But that's another show for another day. And I look forward to seeing you then. Until then, I'm Terry Wilson for Wealth on Wheels. Hey. Yeah, Chris. Got five minutes. Five minutes. I got, <laughs> I got nothing, pal. I'm done. Uh, I, I have an idea, though. Now, we're not supposed to do this. How would you like to see the car? Come on, I want to show you something. Come with me. Actually, I'm glad we've got a couple of extra minutes because, well, for one thing, I get to show you around the studio. This is Master Control. That's the nerve center of the operation. And this, well, this is actually the world's slowest elevator. So what do you say that I, uh, whoa, make a liar out of me. I'll meet you downstairs, okay? Don't go away. You're going to love what I got to show you. Reach downstairs. Like I said, world's slowest elevator. Come on, let's take the stairs. Uh, this is a massive area. This is the uh, basement, if you will, of Wealth TV. And on the floor, that odd looking device is actually an electric motor and it will eventually be going into this beautiful Porsche. This is what my boss bought 
to turn into an electric car. He likes to go fast, so he selected a Porsche. But you got to remember one thing. We talked about this earlier in the show, that when you decide on what kind of a car you're going to turn into an electric car, make sure it's one that fits your lifestyle. Me, yeah, I'm an old school rock and roller. I'd probably get a 57 Chevy. But regardless of what car you choose, the procedure is pretty much the same. We've got a guy that's going to transform this vehicle that has absolutely no experience in working with electric cars whatsoever. He's going to learn it as we go. And we're going to capture it frame by frame, step by step, and hopefully pretty soon we will all be silently passing by the gas stations in town together. Is it going to work? Well, we really don't know, but we will find out on an upcoming episode of Wealth on Wheels Electrified. How you doing everybody? Today Wealth TV has traveled to beautiful Cabo San Lucas for the most exclusive fishing tournament of its kind in the world. It's the Bisbee, where some lucky angler can walk away with up to four million dollars. I'm Terry Wilson and this is Wealth on the Water. Well, come on gang, grab your pole, let's go fishing for the big one. Well, I am with Jason Jepson, and he is the, uh, well, what the heck are you here anyway? <laughs> I'm the guy that makes sure you have the best time possible while you're here in Cabo with us at the Bisbees. He's the purveyor of fun, and also <laughs> he's the PR guy here. He knows everything that's going on. You know, the other day, uh, I was out with Elvis, yep. and uh, aside from getting seasick, we didn't catch much. In fact, nobody did anything that day. I believe one guy came in with an underweight fish, right? That's correct. He's penalized because he brought in a fish that two years down the road could be literally worth millions of dollars. And they got to be 300 pounds or more, right? Exactly. Okay, now the day after that, which was yesterday, somebody came in and just barely had one over the weight limit, and mm -hmm. he won... 200,000. But he could have won a few million. What two happened? million. He could have won two million. He didn't pay in across the board. Kind of he, like... He paid the bare minimum. Going to Vegas and putting a quarter in the uh, slot machine? Exactly, when you could have put a dollar in. And now today's a big payoff because somebody has got to win the money. How much is somebody going to win today and what do they have to do to win it? All they have to do is bring in a fish over 300 pounds and they will win $2.23 million. $2.3 the, the second largest payout ever in sport fishing history. That's as simple as that. Simple as that. Well, I'd like to say in chat, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to run a pole, I'm going to get a boat, get some worms and go catch that fish. You do it. Yeah. Can you use worms? You can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm standing in the middle of a picture postcard. Hi, everybody. My name is Terry Wilson. And yes, we are in the south of France. This is Monaco. And today, Wealth on the Water has traveled to this exotic location to take you on a tour of some of the most expensive yachts in the world. Here at the Monaco Yacht Show, obviously, these huge yachts are the superstars of the event. However, each tent has a support player. They offer something that the yacht owner absolutely must have. For example, if you got a yacht, hey, you gotta have a submarine or a U-boat. And now that you've got something to go under the water with, you need something to fly above the yacht with. And these ultralights are brand new at the show, and I think they're just the ticket for the ultimate yacht. At the Monica Yacht Show, it turns out to be like a uh, country club where you meet old friends, but they gather once a year. For example, this guy over here, this is Willie, a famous German photographer, and he brought to Monaco the German hat queen right over here. She is the uh, reigning hat queen, right? Hello, Wells TV. Welcome to Monaco. And we will be right back with more of the Monaco Boat Show. Don't you dare go away. That was wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Today's show is about trains, the trains that won the West by transporting people, supplies, and material from coast to coast and ended up in Sacramento. Plus, we're going to hop a very special train, the Polar Express, and we're going to ride it all the way to the North Pole, where we're going to meet up with Santa Claus. How you doing, everybody? My name is Terry Wilson, and I want to welcome you to this very special holiday edition of The Collection. Since my visit to the Railroad Museum took place a week before Christmas, I thought it might be fun to try to find a connection between the locomotives that you're seeing and Christmas. And this is where I give you a chance to test your Yuletide knowledge. One of these two locomotives made its first run the same year that artist Thomas Nass drew an image of what would become the iconic Santa Claus on the cover of Harper's Weekly Magazine. Was it the Governor Stamford or was it the Virginia and Truckee number 12? We'll have the answer to that question in just about a minute, so don't you dare go away. There's more holiday cheer right around the corner. 
1950, aluminum Christmas trees were all of the rage around the United States. And about that same time, this rolling post office was delivering Christmas cards and other gifts to people throughout the United States. I wonder how this gizmo works. Hey, Paul? Hey, Paul, you back there? Hey, how you I doing? Am. Good. I, I was wondering if you could show me what this thing does. I sure can. This is the mail hook. That there's the mail crane. We're rolling along at 70 or 80 miles an hour, and we are not going to stop at the small towns between the big ones. So I'm going to catch that mailbag right there. It's going to get stuck right in here. I'm going to drag it off into the car, and I'm going to kick out a bag for that town, and that is our exchange of mail on the fly. In the process of mastering her trade, Amy developed a unique formula that magically transforms an inexpensive roll of paper into a work of wallpaper art. Pranger, Pranger's paper is more friendly than regular wallpaper because it wraps around things easier. You're putting it up in small pieces as opposed to a huge eight foot sheet that usually falls down in your head. Once you put the piece up, you're done. You just keep going and the project goes really fast. Kids can do it. Um, people that normally can't hang regular wallpaper can hang this paper. It's easy. It's fun. Anybody can do it. Now you're trying to tell me that that beautiful wallpaper I saw on your wall was made from this kind of flimsy looking brown sandwich looking kind of paper. That's masking paper. Painter's masking paper. Painter's masking paper. Can be purchased anywhere? Any home store for less than two dollars. Less than two bucks for mm -hmm. this stuff. Okay. And uh, you say even I can do it. I think so. <laughs> yeah, that's a challenge. <laughs> okay, well, where do we start? Okay, we bring it over here and we've got eight foot sheets. Okay. See, it's working out for you. Okay. So you take it to the end of the table. Yeah. Now, why an eight foot sheet? What's eight foot significant of? It's just how I, if this table is eight foot, let's use the whole thing. <laughs> okay. okay. All righty, so we roll it all the way down, huh? Okay, Amy, so what do we do now that we've got the paper down here at the end? I'm going to talk to you here, live from Nashville this Right morning. here, right now. now. We want to talk to you. And it's real simple. Like my partner says, all you have to do is match up that information on the card and give us a call. We'll verify it with the computer, and by golly, we'll give you some major bucks. We can save you more than $50 if you call us right now. The call is toll-free, 1-800-433-3600. And ask our downhill operators for item number 1840. Collectors all over the country have spent $120 on this amazing collection. Not only do you get all 21,500 baseball cards from 1951 to 1985, you also get a 32-page biographical index. North Korea has handed over their documents declaring nuclear materials and other activities. Thanks for joining us. I'm Terry Wilson, sitting in for Rick Pashak, and you're watching Wealth International News for Friday, June 27th. Last month, North Korea handed over nearly 18,000 pages of nuclear documents, and although this move may be a step in the right direction, not everyone is celebrating just yet. Paul Chapman has our first story. In Luke. Also in the Middle East, one of the world's best architects has had his latest project inaugurated in Jerusalem. The Bridge of Strings will not be open for a few years, but is certainly spectacular to look at. Sonia Lake reports. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? My name is Terry Wilson, host and producer of Terry's Travels. So what is Terry's Travels? Well, it's a brand new video series that I've created for the San Diego newspaper group. And in turn, they're putting together a brand new YouTube channel to show those videos on. I'll be going around the city, around the state, around the country. I'll even need a passport to go to some of the places that I'm going to show you. And I look forward to doing that. It's going to be a lot of fun. But for now, I want you to know a little bit about the guy who's doing all this stuff for you. So I put together some clips to show you some of the shows I have done over the past <laughs> uh, number of years. <laughs> Check them out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Alita Patrol, and they are karaoke virgins. They have never done it before on stage in front of a live audience. This show is so hot, we had to do it from the back of a fire engine. It's hot August nights, and we are Sizzling. It's three minutes after one o'clock in the morning. Good a.m. everybody. <laughs> oh, hop in the old marathon man's time machine and buckle up real tight because tonight we are going to go cruising down memory lane right here on Oldies 104.